Ladies and gentlemen, wow, we're finally here. Um, welcome to the podcast, Wrongs to Riches. Um, such an exciting day. I uh, cannot thank everyone enough again for the love and support. It's been such a crazy journey. Um, so thankful to be here. I'm so blessed every day. Uh, Wrongs to Riches, what we're about. Um, if you had to watch the short little intro that I put out on Instagram and all socials, uh, we're a lifestyle podcast. We're all about um, listening to individual stories about all their wrongs and tough upbringings to such riches in life. Um, we cannot thank everyone again for your support. It's just been so overwhelming. We're so grateful for everything. I have three rules to the show. Um, <laughs> so now rule number one, we're going to start with, if you swear, it is not a problem whatsoever. I don't want you coming on this show and not being yourself. It's not what we're about. Be yourself, enjoy it. Um, number two, when the questions are asked, don't be shy, just go for it. Um, enjoy it, embrace it. I don't want no yes or no answers. I just want you to you know, elaborate a little bit more, speak up. It helps the flow, show flow. Um, it keeps things interesting. And third and final rule, fucking smile. That <laughs> shit's free, bro. Don't cost a dime. So enjoy it, embrace it, and yeah, see so how we go. Um, second of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to Paddy Clifton and the boys from Turn Up The Talk for helping me out with everything. Uh, Paddy has been such a legend over the last couple of months, um, helping everything out. Um, this whole thing, honestly, like I said, can't thank you enough, mate. Um, it's just, it's yeah, we're so thankful for everything you've done for us. Um, everyone, please do yourself a favour and head over to Turn Up The Talk on Instagram and YouTube, Spotify, Google Music and Apple Music. They um, drop rele- they release um, podcasts every week. Um, oh, not every week, sorry. They release podcasts when they get new guests in and they've got some big people on the show. So they're doing some incredible stuff over there, um, covering mental health, and they've had some huge guests. So drop in, give them a follow. Thanks very much, boys. And Paddy Clifton, you're a legend, mate. Appreciate it. All right. Wow. We're here. Wrong to Richards, eh? Yeah, I'm keen. I'm very excited. Um, I'm going to introduce our guest. This is Maddie Marsh. Um, Maddie Marsh has been with me since a young fella. Very young fella. It um, <laughs> goes back to the days living in Botany. If uh, anyone didn't know, I grew up in Botany, now living in Maroubra. Very blessed to live in such a beautiful area. Um, me and Maddie, we go way back. Um, been around his family for a very long time. You lived off, oh, where was I? Like, Hastings Street, you're on Botany Road when we first began. Yeah, and you're. Your mum and dad are my, my godparents. So. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I learn something new every day, I guess. Yeah, long time. <laughs> long time. Um, so, yeah, Maddie Marsh has been a good friend, friend of mine for a very long time. Um, I do a lot for this kid and he knows that. Um, so, yeah, basically, let's start it off, mate. Who is Matt Marsh and what does Maddie Marsh do? Um, I grew up in Pagewood Botany area pretty much all my life. I'm in Masco at the moment with some housemates, but um, I'm a qualified arborist, so it's to do with trees, cutting down trees, pruning trees around all around Sydney. Um, yeah, I love training at the gym, playing sport with my mates. Well, I did, and then... Uh, yeah, we'll get it. We'll, yeah, we'll get into that a bit later. Happen, but, um, yeah, I also enjoy talking about um, mental health struggles with people and yeah. just just giving an ear to, to people that want to chat and have a chat. And then I also love chatting to people about my problems as well because I feel mate. like it helps. Helps eat, so. Yeah, mate. I've never bought that shit up, bro. Nah, There's the uh, been 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 out, like for the last couple of years, man. You start to boil that shit yeah. up, that shit just goes south real quick. 100%. You know, 100%. Take, take it, take it or leave it. Like, honestly, it's the best thing you can do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah. Arborist. Arborist? Arborist. Arborist. I'm a qualified arborist. What's that like, mate? Fucking climbing up big trees, mate. Oh, yeah, mate. Lights, bro. Yeah, that's, uh, not my, that's not my thing. Yeah, being 20, 30 metres up in a tree get, gets, your, uh, gets your heart going for sure. But um, I don't know. There's something about it. Like, you just, you're so focused. and yeah. But it just keeps you on your toes. One wrong move and something can seriously yeah, bro, go wrong. Yeah, bro. Jesus, 30 metres yeah. down. That's, that's, that's not pretty. Yeah, you ain't, you ain't surviving that. That's for sure. Yeah, Jesus Christ. All right, mate. Well, a bit of backstory between myself and um, yourself. Uh, many years ago, obviously living in Botany, pretty much next door to each other. So you moved from Botany Road to Pagewood, to Pagewood, and then back to Hastings. And we Street. kind of yeah drifted. But I mean, it's just like it's life, bro. Yeah, it's life. You know what I mean? happened, yeah. We were young as what were you we about ten, eleven? Yeah, even like I could text you, call you up. Oh, uh, yeah. Give us a quick call <laughs> and send us a chat, bro. Yeah. Give us a Skype call. No, better than this. That was from or like very young so I think yeah. I moved into Hastings Street 13 when I was 13, 14 what was that bro I remember that day like it was yesterday yeah, bro. Yeah. I had a scooter out the front yeah, and the rim. Rim. I remember Josh you nearly <laughs> fucking lived his ass up bro that was one of the best yeah, things bro. ever bro yeah it was good oh, right. yeah so where we were living for back for a bit of context at Hastings Street um, nice big house my dad bought oh, yeah. fucking years, years oh, ago they were probably 23, 24 I could be so wrong in saying that but and then the next door neighbours we had some old couple mm. and then they decided to move out 
and the I thought the uh, old fella passed away. That's correct. Yeah, yes, yeah. that is true. Yeah. And then she moved to a nursing home, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then the, the daughter took over. Yes, and they sold it. Yeah. And then they sold it to the bloke who's fucking bought our house too. Yeah, and the corner as well, the print the corner, shop. And, and I'm pretty yeah. sure he's got not the one next to our old house, there's another one. They got that one. I could be wrong. No, I know he's got the three. He's got a few. Corner, but yeah. yeah, and he was wanting to build, I don't know, I can't remember, we wanted, some sort of... Units. Oh, mate. <laughs> everything's just going, just everything's just going north, mate. that yeah. is crazy. <laughs> so then you just moved into there, so what were we saying, about 12, 13, well, I would have been 14, 15. It was 2014, because it was like my, around my 13th birthday. Gee, it was that long ago. Yeah, that's a very long time ago. Crazy, yeah. bro. How good is that, mate? <laughs> honestly, I honestly remember that day, I was all years old. I remember yeah. coming outside and I was like, I don't remember these guys, yeah, I remember yeah, them, yeah. but I don't remember. Like, you know who you are, but... Yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah, just, mate, I remember just clicking in the middle no, of the place. So, so. Mate, yeah, so, mum's your godmother. And I'm pretty sure your dad's my god, like, they're my godparents. Okay. Unless I'm, I know definitely your mum's my godmother. I know mum is, for sure. I don't know about Dino. Fuck, who knows, eh? But your mum's definitely, Michelle's definitely my godmother, because she's told me that. <laughs> yeah, multiple times. Your mum yeah. told me, she was like, when I, when I found out I would bring you on the show, mum was yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mum, I know, thanks for that. I'm not 12 anymore. <laughs> um, so yeah, Bonnie days, mate, growing up. Mate, we used to get into some shit out there. Basketball mate. at the back. Oh, mate. Basketball at the park. Oh, mate, we oh, dogged you in the boys. Yeah. Dogged yeah. shout out, my boy, bro. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a very long time, so <laughs> you're a good man. No, it was good, bro. Yeah, um, Put it out the front. No. Remember, I tried jumping the fence to catch the ball and I scraped my knee. <laughs> that was time ago, bro. Uh, on the jib rock. Yeah, yeah, bro. That was fucking hell. Times, man. My hey, hazy show you a bit of mischief there, bro. Grab a footy in the. Oh, I don't start it up, bro. I know. Leave footy, footy in that. Zone, getting Chinese. Bro, I remember we used to wear socks in the fucking. Um, in like, you remember in the main when we played soccer? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, and I scone someone's knee, scone me in the face. But I thought I was gonna pass yeah, it. Yeah, I remember that, bro. Remember that, that was so much fun yeah, yeah. back in the day. Don't remember? <laughs> okay, little story time, real quick. Um, when was this cricket? Remember the cricket bat in the wall? Yeah, because we used to play in the hallway. Like, bro, there's so much more space down in the bottom first level. So oh, bro, mum and dad, uh, you've never told you this story, but um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you now. So, me and the boys, me and Maddie and Joshy, were in the inside playing a bit of cricket. So, we opened, so how my house, the old house worked, it was just a big long hallway, right? And yeah. it opened up out into the big kitchen and the lounge room. Lounge room. Yeah. And used to, the, the batter used to stand at the back. At the back door. Back door. Yeah, back door. And we would fucking run from the street. Yeah. Through the front door, past Brett the garage. Brett Lee run up. Dead yeah, set, yeah, proper yeah. Mitchell Johnson, <laughs> Mitchell Johnson, whatever his name is, flying yeah. down. Yeah. So we're, we're in there, you line up and you just ping the ball at each other, lad, and we're just best. sitting there rocking. Yeah. So one time... It was a school holidays, because no one was home. Yeah, and Josh was home. Jo- your older brother, Josh, was upstairs. So it was me and Josh, and we were, your mum and dad and younger brother, Noah, were, fly- were in Gold Coast already. They drove up the Gold Coast. Yeah, yeah. So we used to do this trip every year, we'd go up there and go to Burley um, and surf, and you know, it was, oh, younger days, mate, that was so good. Yeah. Mate, no, no dramas, no, no dramas words. at all, no, oh, mate, no responsibility. Um, so we used to go up there and we used to just muck around and um, so mum and dad had gone up early and we were hop on a flight the next day and so we thought it was a good idea that we play cricket in the house. Mm. Um, so Maddie's out, in the, Maddie's out in the field, he's, uh, um, he's ready to go. Yeah, the bottom there. of the steps. Yeah, he's ready to go <laughs> and, and Joshy's run to the other side of the street. So he's lined up this fucking run like Brett Lee bowl and he just absolutely sprinted down the hallway and pegged it at me. And what I've done is I've just tried to absolutely slap the living shit out of this ball. I've let go of the bat. Because there's no grip <laughs> on the bat either. <laughs> I've let go of the bat and the bat is just gone and it honest to God, I'm looking at it and it's like slow motion. Yeah, yeah. And the bat's just gone doink into the fucking wall, the wall yeah. and it's hanging it's out the wall. It's hanging out just like that. <laughs> <laughs> but little did everyone yeah, know, like we've got a fucking auction sign out the front of the house, we're trying yeah, to sell yeah, the yeah. house. Yeah. Because we're moving, we're moving a fucking yeah, room around. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there, and my hands are on my head, and I see Matt, Matt's looking at the fucking bat hanging out of the wall, I'm just like, oh my god, this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, and then, long story short, mate, we're stressing out, we're freaking grabbed, out. Um, old silicon, waterproof silicon or something, <laughs> trying to seal you it You put it in the shower, bro, and let you glue the shower. <laughs> trying to punch the wall bro I found the old paint bro I found the paint yeah. that mum and dad had painted inside the house yeah. I'm trying to paint it up and this and that so I'm stressing out we're trying to sort our stories mate young <laughs> kids and then we're trying to tell stories of mum and dad and we're trying to figure stuff out so oh. so what's happened is I've, I've, I've let it sit overnight and it's kind of dried up a little bit and I've gone up to, to fucking to Queensland the next day and what I've done is I've put my elbow in the wall <laughs> and it's like, let it, I've let it sit yeah, there like put that. The paint, put yeah. the paint so it looked like I've elbowed into the wall. Yeah. 
I've gotten up, up to Queensland and I've told mum and dad the story. I was like, mum, dad, I've fallen down the stairs and I'm fucking walking through the wall. I'm just falling down the stairs and going left. And mum's like, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. And dad's like, are you all right, mate? I was like, yeah, I'll put my elbow through the wall, this and that, little that. And I was a cricket bat, I was hanging out the fucking oh, wall. Bro. Oh, man, one of the greatest stories. That was, that was so funny. Oh, so, so yeah, funny. so on from that, I want to talk about your upbringing, mate. Like, yeah. you know, everything's good and everything's bad to come yeah. along, you know I mean? It's what we're about. We want to talk about the wrongs and yeah, how you progressed in life to the riches and you know, the riches mm, of everything. So, definitely. you know, let's listen to your story, mate, your upbringing. Um, I didn't have too, too a crazy upbringing, like I wasn't homeless or anything, yeah. but um, probably a major event was my parents divorcing when I was nine. Gee, that's young. Um, yeah, I was just, I was heaps young. I didn't really understand what was yeah. going on at the time. Like, Absolutely. Being nine, you don't really know don't too you, much mate. Too much in the world that's going on. Yeah, but, um, yeah, as I got older and became a teenager and stuff, it's, I sort of clicked on to what was really going on yeah. and um, just taught me a lot of independence because my parents obviously were divorced for certain reasons and, um, yeah, my mum was working as much as she could to just yeah. put food on the table, pay rent and on a, on a single income with... Three, three young boys in a house. And it's hard because like you're only nine years of age, so what are yeah. you meant to do? Yeah, I can't help out my You can't go to work yeah. at like something from McDonald's or something no. like that. You can like, you're, no. you're gotta be a certain age. Yeah, so it just taught me a lot of independence, like because my mum was working so much and like trying to just get by week to week, yeah. day by day, like yeah. it was just me and my brothers get through well, like, got through everything together, you know. Well you're in well primary school, what's year nine? Well I don't even know like Three or four or something, or something, yeah, like that. something like that. Heaps young, and it just, yeah, I became quite independent from it. Um, not by choice, I think it was just a natural instinct yeah, that it happened just, because yeah. I can see mum was getting home late, then yeah. she'd cook dinner, just be tired, mate. Yeah, just tired, and then she'd yeah. go to bed and then do it all over again. So, just trying to lean on my brothers and stuff to yeah. just being it together, yeah. And you got you know, obviously your twin brother Josh, you yep. got another brother Blake, Blake, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, how's Blake going? Yeah, he's good. Yeah, um, he's a pretty quiet kid. Yeah, um, he always had been. Yeah, he and he's, he was back then, and he still is now. Like that's just yeah. that's Blake. He's I still he's had a bit of a stream step as of recent though. Yeah, the last couple of years he opened up a lot. It's good, but um, still, it, we were all so young. Like you, you don't really know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Um, and to, how do you like? There's no rule book and. Yeah. There's no book on how to deal with things like that, so yeah. you just, we just sort of got by with each other, like just play PlayStation together, go play basketball together, yeah. play cricket together, you know. Good cool those days, man. Mate, so much better. Yeah, I wish I was that young. Oh, bro, I remember we used to have the COD, we used to play COD, a bit backstory, we used to play COD yeah. Duty back in the day. Yeah. Me, Maddie, and Joshy, mate. Yeah, stay up till stupid hours. Oh, in mate, the three, four in the morning. <laughs> mate, I remember one time oh, we had that, when we had the LAN event at yeah. your house, the yeah. big tables, yeah. mate, room, on the LAN yeah. event, everyone's running on the same internet. Yeah. So just yeah, fuck, mate. We had the, all the boys over, mate, for the whole week. And remember eight, that eight, nine of us or something. That was just so yeah. good. Mate. I remember we went and got subway and stuff. Yeah, walked to subway, bro. <laughs> Joshy waited with the. Oh, I can't remember the big boys' names. Nice, nice, yeah, nice, great cool. near, great yeah. near. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they don't know they don't know the area. No, no. So we spent the we spent at home. Yeah, and, no, no, and no, the no. poor <laughs> mud was gassing, bro. Our lad was just over high. And Josh was like, I remember that. I remember that. And the pouring rain, bro. Yeah, started pissing out. Oh, Joshy, mate, what a fucking bike. Yeah, what a bloke, what a guy. So just crazy to think, eh? Hey, like, we used to sit up to three, four a.m. thinking this is the best, and then yeah. you get out of high school, you start working, and just fucking it just hits you like a brick line. No, bro, just, growing up, man. Oh, like bro. I said, stay on the regulars, never <coughs> grow up. Sad. If your kids watching this, never ever grow up. I know I'm only turning twenty three very soon. <laughs> You're a twenty two year old over here. It doesn't matter. Never ever grow up. Promise me you don't grow up, kids. <laughs> stay as young forever. Okay, so, um, Joshy. Yeah, um, 10th of Jan, 2021, 10 in the morning, he took his own life in my in our garage at home. Um, before that, he was, like, I knew he was struggling with a lot of mental health, like, he, yeah. he posted about it a bit, and yeah, yeah. just, like, calling out for help. Yeah. Um, yeah, I knew he was struggling with it, I sort of did what I felt like was the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. Um, I'd try to get him in the gym, just, you know, get active, like, you got to keep moving, and yeah. he'd just be so bedridden, like, and he's not sick, like, he's just, just mental illness, man, like, yeah, man, I know, trust me. he'd get home from work and just go straight to bed, like, yeah. he wouldn't sleep, he'd just mindlessly scroll on his phone, like, just yeah. trying to just distract himself from whatever was going through his head, yeah. um, but he actually got a lot better, he started in, like, started at a new company, we worked together for two years. That's right, because I remember seeing photos and stuff with you yeah. on the trees. 
Man, it was the best. Working with you two, brother. Like, so your hard best hard. mate. Fucking. That's crazy. Dream, man. you know. Dream. And you just, you just click the chemistry, like. Our work efficiency. Yeah, uh, it's funny, right? You grow up and you just, you just hate each other. Yeah, you know, yeah. Younger brothers or your older brothers. Just, yeah, just, yeah. Just being around each other, you just hate it. Yeah. And then you don't realise, you know, until you get a bit older that that they like your best mates no, and will do anything for and you. And literally, that was it. Like he he got me a job in tree work. Um, oh my god! I just started it as a labourer, like just doing it for a bit of cash. Yeah. Just because I wasn't doing much at the time, and um, yeah, showed me so many things. He was already doing it for a year and a half. He already knew so much. Yeah. He taught me so much about the job, and um, yeah, and then he started a new job um, at a different company, same job, different company, and bought his ute. Um, and he was like so happy about it. He's like, I'm just gonna work on my ute, go yeah. forward driving my mates, like just keep busy, get away. He used to go camping a fair bit as well. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, New Year's came. He had a couple of weeks off work, out of his routine, um, Christmas holidays. He just kept saying, I just want to go back to work. I just want to go back to work. Yeah. And there was obviously no work on because everyone's on their holiday break. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, went out with the with the work boys, like had a couple of drinks and stuff. And then, um, yeah, he uh, I asked the boys that he was with and he was looking on, at his on phone. The night. Yeah, on the night. He said he, they said he was looking at his phone and something just clicked in him, like, Drove home. They were calling him. You're right, bro. And he was chatting to him, and they were like, "We'll come to yours. Like, we'll yeah. we'll hang out. We'll go yeah. have a drink in the in the garage, whatever." Yeah. He's like, "No, no, I'm good. I'll just I'm just gonna go sleep it off. I just don't feel the best." And then, um, yeah, I finished the night shift that night. I went to my missus' house down the road. Um, it was in Hastings Street as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah Hastings right. Street. And um, yeah, th- I didn't know at the time. The my last text message with him was something like. Hope you're all good. Like, I just got home from night shift. Um, like, love you, bro. You know, like, yeah. Like, just tell me if you need something because I knew it was out. Yeah. And then, yeah, Sunday rolled around, whatever, whatever. Monday rolled around, Tuesday came, and uh, I was starting to get real wor- worried. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to go put a missing persons in because. So, you hadn't heard anything? Calling him. Um, I had mates over my, my house. Uh, Jack Steen's birthday shout out Jack Steen great man absolutely great man we'll touch on Jackie boy later yeah yeah. Um, yeah, we had we went to the cricket that day on the Sunday came back to mine so that was the 10th still the 10th came back to mine the 11th rolled around which was Jack's birthday and then um, the 12th yeah so the 12th so the Monday sorry Um, and I was like fuck we were calling him calling him didn't have a couple of days yeah, and then um, I called my boss at work on Monday Arvo because I just finished. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to come in tomorrow. Like, I'm pretty worried. Um, yeah. I haven't spoken to him in two days. Like, his phone was dead because um, we'll call him but just go straight to voicemail. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, my boss was like, look, do what you have to do. Go put a missing persons in. Go look wherever you need to. Like, yeah. um, And when it was Monday afternoon, I really started thinking the worst. Like, mm, you know, as, you, as you would no yeah sure. and my missus was like she said to me she was like I don't want to say it but do you think he's still alive like do mm. you think he's still around and I was like fuck I'm really starting to think that he's not you know yeah and uh yeah I was on the phone to Jack he was like just go check the back shed like he might have just had a massive weekend passed out like and I was like yeah but he would have woken up by now come inside you know like yeah. I put clothes on his bed to see if he'd move him because I just followed clothes yeah. put on his bed. Like, little footprint kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, a little like, mind game in a yeah, way. Yeah, so he was just yeah. fucking around with me. Yeah. And then, yeah, turn the corner, go to my garage, bro. And fucking, yeah, there he was. Um, same clothes from the Saturday night. So that's when I knew it was from the Saturday night. Fuck me. And I just ran out the front. Called Jack, called my missus and just fucking broke, eh? Like, oh, fuck me. Like, I just like, I don't know, man. I just I just started bawling my eyes out. Like, oh, me. fuck me. Um, yeah, my missus ran down, Jack ran down, and then he called the police and the ambulance, and then there's like six cop cars out the front, two Ambos, and I was just like, I just remember sitting on my front fence, like, I was just staring at the ground, you know, the white cement? Yeah, I know, yeah. And I was just, I was just like, I just went numb. Yeah. I, I was, I stopped Questions crying. Why? I stopped That's... crying. Um, yeah. It was a really weird, like, thinking of it now, it was really weird in a way of um like i just stopped people showing up like bawling their eyes out like everyone's so mm. upset and i was just there like yeah like numb i like just said literally numb yeah. like, and i felt numb i had to talk to the detectives i didn't crack i didn't cry yeah and i'm not saying fuck you don't cry like cry i cry all the time you know but i just felt like i couldn't yeah. i was so numb like to what i'd just seen and 
and the, all the people that were there and all the sirens going on like there was a million things going on at once and I was just numb like I just I didn't even nothing registered with me you know yeah. like people coming up like just it, blank yeah literally blank and I just remember like I remember the day like I'll remember it forever but um yeah just so numb at that time bro mm. I was I didn't really know what to do eh? yeah. like it's just fucking unreal because I found out that night mm. um from a from a message from mum, mm. um, she had found out because mum had, your mum had told mum. Yeah, right. And yeah. I was like, no, nah, it's not, it's not true. Oh, yeah. And I'm at home and I was in bed and I was like, <clears throat> nah, it's not true. So I got on the phone and I rang Josh. Voice mum straight yeah, away. Straight away, yeah. Like, Fuck, this can't be true. Yeah. Like, it's not, there's no chance. Yeah. So I just kind of just waited off for a couple, a couple half hours. It was about half an hour, forty five minutes, and then I seen. Jack had posted a photo. Yeah. No, that was the next day. Sorry, yeah, Jack I had posted. Next, I, I put up a story that yeah, night. I think yeah. it something. It one of yours was you yeah. or Jack. Yeah. And I had. He said it was like no, it's not fucking true. There's no way. So I went to bed that night. I said there's, there's just no chance. Oh, you just like. I was like, there's no way. Yeah, it, right, it, yeah. it, it can't be. Can't be right. And yeah, I was yeah. telling him, mate. Honestly, I said, Mum, I don't want to fucking hear it. Mm. it, it I don't. She's like, whatever. Just take the night. Yeah. So I just took the night and kind of. And then I kind of, I woke up the next morning and had seen the thing and I yeah. just fucking lost mate, it, mate. Yeah. I've gone, no, 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 no. Insane, bro. And, well, some people, well, we're obviously going to let it now. Well, I'd messaged Joshy probably a couple of weeks before. Before that, yeah. Because he was posting a lot on his Instagram yeah. about yeah. some things and just not mm. feeling all. And I messaged him saying, mate, bro, look. Fucking, you know where I am, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, just, just not afraid to speak. Yeah. Don't be weak, bro. You know what I mean? It's not... Yeah, mental health is a big thing, bro. It's a, a massive, massive thing. thing. Yeah. And then some people really struggle from it. Yeah. And some people may not ever get through it. Some people do get through it. Yeah. But there's always a fucking light at the end of the tunnel. 100%. No matter what, bro. If Definitely. you can tell, keep telling yourself every day you roll out of bed, you can roll out of bed and open your fucking eyes. Better than, better than whatever's going on in your head. Bro, exactly right. And mm. you know that you can get out of bed and put your feet on the ground, stand up and walk out that door. Yeah. You're doing something right. Yeah. The minute you can get out of bed, you're doing something right. I kept telling him that. I said, mate, it's okay. Everything's going to be fine. You know what I mean? Everything's yeah. Gonna, everything's going to sort itself out. You just got to get to that light. You got to find that light. You got to stick to it. Because it's going to, so some days it's going to feel tight. Some days it's going to feel really open. Like you're, gonna, you're there. It just goes, it's just your highs and lows. And you yeah, exactly. Just with it, yeah. I got a really short response back and I was like, something's really? not okay. Yeah. So I kind of let it play for a couple of days. I let it go. I just let things kind of handle itself. Yep. And I messaged him again and he was good. Mm. I said, okay, maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, maybe yeah, that was fine. a lot of people, man. Like he, he just got a new ute, started a new yeah. company. Yeah. Me, me and my mates, like we're talking about, we're like, fuck, he's doing well. He's doing a lot better, you know? Yeah. But you seriously just never know mental That's health. Thing, bro, you just you, never know, man. That's simple. Like, so, like, uh, like it's such a great foundation. Are you okay? Mm. Like it is. Are you okay? It's three fucking words, bro. Yeah. Sometimes you always have to, you got to ask someone, how you going? Yeah. Are you okay? 100%. That's simple. Yeah. And then if someone, if someone is really hurting and you ask that question, you'll sit there for hours. Yeah, you will know. And yeah. you will chat and chat and chat. But and on the flip as well, you might ask someone, they might be having a shit day and they, yeah. they say, no, I'm fine, but they go, fuck, you know? Someone's yeah. there for me. And exactly. That's all they need. Some everyone's different. They go home and they say the money you asked for. They ask that question. Yeah. And that's and, and, and they've got that security. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, no, okay. Definitely. If I am fucking struggling, I can come and speak to these go guys. Talk to someone. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. They they, they want to listen to me. No, I think it's very important. Um, but you just never know, man. Yeah. You never know. So, I remember calling. So your same reaction. I called my mum. I was like, I really don't want to do this. So, yeah. Because I said to Blake, I was like, you call dad, I'll call mum, and. Same thing. She was like, "No, like, just in denial, man. Yeah. Like, no, no, this can't be true. You know, yeah. no." And she was away at the time at the farm. Okay. So she's eight hour, eight hour drive away. Shit. So um, that, that's that's mum. That's mum from dad's farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where she grew up, and um, I was like, "Don't drive home. Uh, we'll get you flights tomorrow morning. Absolutely. And then I'll pick you up from the airport, and yeah. we'll go from there." But the same thing as being numb. I just felt like I was like just. Be there, be yeah. strong for, for uh, your mum, for your dad, for your family, for your mates. Like, and I want to touch on that too. Like, how how were you able to send yourself to be there for your mum, to be there for your brother? Like, how, were you that rock or were you? No, I like, definitely. I take on that role 
with with a lot of things. Yeah. Like I try to, and it can be a bit of a downfall where yeah. uh, it's like I put myself second, and everything else just bottles up inside. Absolutely. Because I'm like, I want to be there for my mum. You yeah. Because I as soon as I as soon as I had to call mum and I, I heard her reaction, like. Yeah. I was like, yeah, she's not going to be all right for a long time. That's the person you've always been, but yeah. you have always fucking been like that. You've always been that guy that's gone and sat down and said, how are you going? You know mm. what I mean? I'm good. I'll sort myself out later. Yeah. But you always, that's just, that's just your trait. Yeah. And I feel, I, sometimes I do that too. Yeah. Like, that's why, that's why we're starting this, because I want to help people get over that fucking bump at that yeah. wall and to, to doing things they enjoy doing. You know what yeah, I mean? Don't sure. bottle shit up. Nah, it's the worst that's thing to do. That's the worst thing you can do. The worst thing to do. It's, it's so totally okay to go and speak to someone. 100%. You know what I mean? There's mm. no shame in it. No, There's not at no all. shame. Not at all. And that's what people are like mixing up. You know what I mean? There's no shame in talking to someone about how you're feeling. No, especially with myself. Like, I felt like I was doing the right things. No. But in reality, deep down, it, I hadn't really processed everything properly yeah um because i was trying to just be be strong and yeah. show people like yeah fuck this has happened but you can you can really you can put on a brave face and absolutely mate do do crazy things yeah but inside it's different yeah 100 percent beast bro no and i've started to learn that only recently to be honest like, yeah so we've got some notes here so mm. going on from this like everything has happened I know it's taken obviously a couple of months to, you know, it's probably still hitting you now. Like, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's probably it's, hit you every it's always on day. my mind, yeah. 100%. It's on my mind every day, mate. I, yeah. I've got his, I've got a photo of him on my bedside table because I don't yeah, want yeah. See, yeah. I, I have his ute, like the ute, his ute's yeah. mine now, so. Yeah. Every time I open my door, the ute's there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Don't, don't blame her. Um, yeah. How'd you get through it, mate? Uh, at first, my coping mechanisms with a lot of things when, when times get tough is. Yeah. Go run, go train, go play sport. Um, and I did that. I started 75 hard. 75 hard. Because I've done it twice. Yes. And I was like, when did I feel like I was in control of my mind? Yeah. Like, to really just get away from everything and focus on myself. Yeah. And I was like, 75 hard. Two okay. of my, my mates, Stephen and Val. Shout out Stephen and Val. Um, they jumped on board with me. They were like, fuck yeah, let's yeah. do this. And we did it. And... Um, before, before we go into it, yeah. 75 hard, just a bit, bit of a background. Oh, so it's 75 days, yep. two workout, two 45-minute workouts, one indoor, one outdoor. Yep. Stay stay on a strict diet. Um, read a ten, read 10 pages of the self-help book. Yep. Um, take a photo every day. Yep. What else am I missing? I think that was really it. Yes. Take a gallon, gallon of water, so four litres of water a day. Yep. That was easy for me to work. Yeah. Sweating my oh, ass yeah, absolutely, off all day. You're sweating the water back out, but yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think they were the sort of the rules, the, the yeah. base. Really. That was base principles, yeah. Yeah, and um, it just keeps you disciplined. Like said for seventy five days, no weekends off, no alcohol, no yeah. no fast food. Yeah, that was my life. No yeah, alcohol. yeah, no alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, that's seventy five hard. I've done it twice previously, and then this was my third time yeah, doing it. it is. And I was like, I just thought it was the answer. Yeah. Because. A previous experience with it where I felt like I was in a bit of a slump so I'd do it and I would um, I'd feel amazing after it Yeah. and I'm like what's the next challenge yeah. I'll go find the next thing to do but I think with something with loss and trauma and yeah. experiencing the things that I that I have yeah. um, I, it definitely turned out to be a ne- like a negative coping mechanism yeah. like short term I was like yeah I'm keeping busy people yeah. ask me how I'm doing I fucking work out twice a day. I read books. I yeah. I drink water. I, I eat healthy. Yeah. And they go, yeah, that's really good. You know, like sounds like you're doing well. You're handling everything well. And I was, I thought I was as well at the same time. Yeah. But in reality, it was a, such a downfall because I was just like, when's the next workout? When's, yeah. What have I got to do next? When, yeah. when I should have stopped, like keep training. I'm not saying don't train, but I was definitely overdoing it. Because my the, my job is so physical as well, like yeah. just beating myself oh, yeah, the ground, absolutely. and I was like, I make myself so tired. Seventy three workouts a day. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, I make myself so tired, I can just go to sleep. Yeah. And I thought I was like, that's sick. Like, I don't yeah. have to think, stay up, think about everything. Yeah. When I really should have gone to a professional and seeked professional help, and I had so many people telling me, yeah. like, people were like, you don't understand that what you've seen and what you've been through isn't natural. You're not meant to hundred percent to see things like that, and mm. um. Yeah, I think it ended up actually being a negative outcome because I was 
just distracting myself by running and yeah. going to the gym and working out. Yeah. Like it's all short term stuff. Like I said, you've got to, sometimes you've got to like embrace that shit, bro. Yeah, 100%. Like, I know it's hard and I get it. Like, but mm. the minute you can kind of realize like, like this shit's happened. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about it. No. Nah. The minute you'll, you'll, you'll say, okay, I'm, I can get through this now. Yeah. Like, I, I can find a way to get, get through this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's just processing trauma properly as well. Like yeah. trauma sits really deep inside your heart. And yeah. um, when, when you're keeping yourself so busy mentally, like what's the next task, etc. You, mm. you don't really, you can't open your heart up and say, hey, like, I really need to process this trauma. You just, mm. you end up suppressing all that inside you. And like, honestly, the last month I've, it's only just clicked from, especially my missus telling me that, like you need to go and see someone because yeah. and then it ends up when I'm not doing 75 hard or when I don't work out, it makes me feel bad because I'm like, well, now I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Your head spirals, you go out on a weekend, you have drinks and then you just lash out at everyone. Like I started lashing out at people like my mates, my girlfriend, yeah. just because I had all this pain and trauma inside me that mm. I just, I was like, I was just so worked up and like, I just didn't really know, like my headspace was terrible yeah. when yeah, I work out, I've got muscles, I've got a six pack, I've got, I work hard. Look good, feel good. Yeah, you look good, feel good. But yeah. it's about what's going on in your head and in, uh, inside you. Yeah. you, you that's, that's where the real the real workout happens. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Because there's 75 days. Like, when you get 75 days, yeah. like, that, your challenge is done. Yeah, you're done, yeah. Obviously, you can continue on and you can, and you can keep yep. going. Yeah. But like, you're not really working towards it. Nah. You know, like, oh, you nah. Can't, you, yes and no, but like, there's nothing that you, you've got. You're setting a goal to. Kind nah. of thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, You've done the 75 days, you've done your two workouts a day, you've yeah. 10 pages a day, you drank your four, gu- your four liters of water, yeah, yeah. you've eaten good, you know alcohol, this and that, whatever's yeah. going on. So, obviously it creates a routine. Yeah. Well, it's 21 days to make a habit, isn't it? Yeah, that's something not the same. Like, but it's like, like free to break it or something. Yeah, free yeah, to break it, you know what I mean? So yeah. the minute you stop, yeah. like you go, ah, what, what, yeah. I'm all in my head again. Your head just starts spiraling, 100%. That was back. happening to me. And then, yeah. like, I just feel like I'd... It's not like I couldn't speak about it. I knew I could speak about it, but I feel like I'd already told everyone enough that had gone on and mm. you'd sort of cop the same answer. Like, like I know this sucks and stuff because mm. people would be in genuine and just helping you out, but going to a professional and seeking proper professional help for yeah. mental health, like it'll do you wonders. Like yeah. you might feel like you've got everything going for you. You know, I had my workout routine. I still work out today. I work, you know, I work hard. Yeah. But it's seriously about what's going on inside, inside That's my right. head and inside me that I've only just started working on properly now. Yeah. Because I thought I was doing all the right things by keeping so busy, but it was definitely a, a, such a downfall in the long run. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Mm. It's crazy, mate. Yeah. Just I was so oblivious to it, you know. Yeah. I was so like, I was like, yeah, I might have a shit day, but I'm gonna go run and I'm gonna go train and yeah. I'm gonna eat healthy. Like, you think you're doing all the right things, but in the yeah. long run, man, fucking hell. Yeah, it's done me a massive injustice yeah. from just suppressing everything for so long. Yeah, like, mixed messages on it. Like, the, the, sh- the shit ain't easy. Nah, nah. Like, fuck me, it ain't easy. Nah, not at all. Like, it's, it, like, like this chat, it's, the chance is hard, bro. Yeah. So, like, 75 days of it. A long time, man. Like, obviously, at the start, it's, mm. you're like, oh, am I really doing this? Am I going to yeah, stick to yeah. it? Yeah. And obviously, like I said, 21 days, kind of thing, it does get easier. Like, it, you know, you start to get that, get in that groove. And um, a good mate of mine, I just spoke to about, I have some stuff that's going on at the moment in the background. He was talking about routine. Mm. And routine, he was saying routine. He said, oh, I just get up in the morning. I do the same thing every morning. Mm. I go train. I eat my breakfast. I'm off to work. Yeah. By like 5.30, I'm on the road. Yeah. I do the same thing. I come home and I train again. Go to bed at the same time. Yeah. Routine, routine, routine. Routine is massive, yeah. It's huge, mate. It's, yeah. Honestly, it's been but life-changing for me. The biggest thing, I love a routine. I'm a sucker for a good routine. Yeah. Like, I wish I was on a massive, strict routine 24-7. Yeah. But it's when the routine gets broken. Uh, for me, it was like, fuck, this isn't normal. This, isn't a, part, this isn't a part of my routine. And I felt well, very I vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. And then that's when I'd start, you know, getting in my head and... Yeah. And then I'd realise, like, fuck, you know, maybe I should go and see someone for yeah. these times when I'm out of my routine and your head's just going crazy. Like, you don't even know what's yeah. going on. You're Vulnerability, right? mate. Fuck, yeah. mate. Yeah. But you've also got to... you got to 
know that you're being vulnerable. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm gonna make a change. Yeah. Like, how how can I how can I embrace being vulnerable and make it a strength? Yeah. Because you can't you can't stay vulnerable your whole life. You're not gonna get you're not gonna get anywhere. Get anywhere. You're yeah. just gonna end up hurting other people. And yeah. That's definitely happened with me. Like. Friends, you know, relationship, family, like it just, I just shut off to the world because yeah. I felt vulnerable and I was like, oh, this is fight or flight. And I yeah. just go into flight mode and, yeah. and just sit in my room and shut off to the world. That's the thing. Like, I feel like if you get stuck in that, that vulnerability, that circle, right? And you, you, you can't find a way out. Mm. Obviously you've got friends and family there, but yep. like, you've got to take it on your own. You've got it's to take, down to you. You've got to take 100%. the initiative. You know what I mean? You've got to take the initiative to, to step out of that. Yeah. Comfort zone. You cannot rely on everyone around you. Exactly. They're like, going to be for you. They're going to exactly. be there for you. Yeah. Exactly. But they're not always going to be there yeah. for you. They're not going to give anything on a silver platter. No. You've no. got to get up. You've got to get out and yeah. do things that make you feel uncomfortable yeah. because that's when it becomes comfortable. 100%. The minute you can step over that, you know, that, like I said, that barrier, that wall, yeah. and and take on something that you have been wanting to do for so long. Mm. You know what I mean? You've been just, you just, it's just eating exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it's just right. eating you in the inside. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I don't want to do it because I don't know this person can think this yeah. and this and that. But what's the biggest? What's the biggest loss if it doesn't work out? Exactly right. Well, at least you gave it a crap. fucking crap. Yeah. The minute you can figure out, the minute you can sit there and go, I don't give a fuck what these people think about me. Mm. You're gonna go places. Yeah. I promise you. Yeah. The minute you can sit there and go, oh, fuck, I don't care what they think about me. Mm. You know what I mean? That's when big things happen. Hundred percent. And the big, the big things that you want to do starts with the small wins. For exactly me, right. right now, the last month, like. It hasn't been the greatest mentally for me, but some days I'm just like, get out of bed, go to work, um, and then just come home and just relax and let your body rest. Yeah. Because I understand what I've been through. Yeah. Like, and I haven't really, as I said, processed and like process all that properly. You just yeah. need to, you need to really rest. And if it's just getting out of bed to go to work, so be it. It's yeah. a fucking win. It's a small win, but it's yeah. a win. It's better than staying in bed all day. So I'm going to touch on that a bit more, but. Small wins, I get that. Unfortunately, you've gone and torn your fucking ACL. Yeah, I have. And for people, oh, everyone knows what year. that is. Yeah, yeah ACL's ACL's the fucking worst. ACL is yeah. one of the it's one of the worst. Yeah. ACL, fucking, well, just the knee in general. The knee, right? knee and shoulders, hips. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Tearing the ACL, and would you say that you found potentially found a cancerous cyst? Yeah. So then they did like. All the scans and then my MRI came back and there's a massive white spot at the bottom of my femur. Jesus Christ. Was been there for years apparently. No way. Didn't know about it. It was meant to be heaps painful. I just thought I had like knee pain from all the running and stuff I was doing. So have you torn the ACL? Torn my ACL. So you'd already torn it? Already torn it. Then found out. Then found it because they were looking to really see what was wrong with my knee. Fuck it. I didn't know. My, like, obviously I found out my ACL was torn with the MRI and then this cyst came came about. One of the rare types of cysts, it's called a chondroblastoma. Okay. Um, Elaborate. I don't really know what it is, but it's meant to be heaps painful. I don't know how you spell it. It's a rare type of uh, rare type of cyst. I think it's C R N D O chondroblast B L A S T. Good luck if you if you sort it out, if you get yeah, out, go look yeah. at it. Don't don't you know, honestly get pure it luck. Massive blessing in disguise. Yeah, I've torn my ACL. Crazy, right? But fuck, this thing apparently could have become cancerous. Years yeah. down the track. Completely off topic, like similar thing like Case LeVert. Mm. Over at, what was he, basketball player played for the yeah. Nets and then went to the Nets. Pacers. Yeah, he's at the Pacers. There's a skin on him just for, for medical. Yeah, tumor. Tumor in his fucking head. Like, yeah. What the f- You know what I mean? Crazy shit like that, but. Um, yeah, off topic, but yeah. So now I've had, uh, I had surgery in January, so I told my ACL in December, December 12th. Heffron Parks. Not great feelings. I'll stay. Not great feelings. Nothing I'll against stay. him, Chubba. We love you, mate. <laughs> if you're listening, we do love you, but... Um, and that was another annoying thing. I was doing a playing social Oz tag, you know? Yeah, tough. I wasn't working or anything. Tough. Else, or whatever. I yeah, had tough ones, mate. I had a bone graft in December, so they, they cut into my femur, cut a slice out of my femur, yeah. removed the cyst, um, put someone else's bone marrow in there. Wow. And so now my ACL is still torn because they can't do the ACL surgery until this is healed. And then it just ah. came back as well that the cyst has potentially come back again. So the whole process restarts. But I'm not 100% until I get an MRI. Jesus Christ. And even years later, uh, I have to keep going to a specialist and get um, yearly checkups to see if this thing comes back. That's fucking nuts. Yeah. That's... So, so out of the blue, not what I was expecting. Um, I'd already been through enough shit in 2021 oh, and then finished enough. it with that and now it's still going on today 
Like there's a massive plate in my leg. At the yeah. yeah. I've had a couple of injuries in my life. Did you share the fair share of them? Yeah, I've been down. Um, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's never an ACL tear. Touch wood, my God. Yeah, I don't have any wood here, but yeah. <laughs> um, fucking crazy, mate. Yeah, it's just so unexpected, man. So unexpected. I love taking turns, unfortunately. Take mm. turns are the worst. And then take turns to look better as well. No, they, they, um, they hopefully they come soon. Oh, they will, they mate. Do. So you're training at the moment or anything? Just at the gym. Um, how, like, how are you doing that with the knee, though? Like, are you so I was struggling heaps for two months. Like, my knee was locked shut, essentially. Mm. Well, not shut. Locked in a position. and Just um, stuck? Stuck, yeah. I had to force my knee to bend. So there was heaps of scar tissue. I had my missus cranking on the back of my knee. Like pushing it and it would just stop because there's so that's much big scar love, tissue. Leah. That's big love. <laughs> well done. There's um there was so much scar tissue there that I had to break it to, to get my range of motion back. Shit, I joke. Yeah, and so I'm I'm good now. I can walk around. It gets a bit sore. Yeah. But um my training sucked and and this is what I was saying to you with the whole working out thing. Yeah. It's good short term, but that was all taken away from me for two months. It just goes. And I just I could I couldn't work. I couldn't train properly. I couldn't yeah. run. Yeah. Um, and man, I just went, like, I just, same thing. I just sat in my room and I was like, all my mates are at work, my missus at work. Like I didn't, um, do a lot. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck do I do with myself? Yeah. Like I stopped eating cause I wasn't burning calories. Like my appetite was gone and just put weight on, eh? No, I really, I didn't. I just, yeah, yeah I was getting like skinny fat, but yeah. that's all right. But, um, just mentally bro. Because the way I deal with things is go for a run, go train, but I couldn't, couldn't do, do that. that. And so I'm still struggling now to find, like I can still go and train, but it's yeah. not going to help me mentally all the time, you know? So I'm still trying to find ways to really properly deal with everything. And yeah. so I've started seeing a psychologist, which is Good. well overdue. Fuck. <laughs> well overdue. Yeah. I should have done it. No, I didn't even fucking admit that. Yeah, 100%. I not even admit that shit, bro. No, but I'm, I'm glad I'm going yeah. um, once a week at the moment. Uh, just learning strategies on, like when you, as you said, when you're vulnerable and you yeah. f- like you feel like no one's there, yeah. like how to deal with all that stuff. And you can't run. There's only so many k's you can run, and so many, yeah. so many dumbbells. So your you body can just gives it up. Yeah, and then it just stops being your coping mechanism. So you yeah. gotta, you really gotta be inside yourself and find your, find yeah, your, fucking hell, yeah, mate. Find yourself big time. Well, shit, well, shit, pretty shit couple of fucking years. Mate, it's, it's yeah, my, my, the recovery is still, could be extended if the cyst comes back and I still would get my ACL put back together. So when do you find out about the cyst? Hopefully in the next three weeks. Wow, so yeah. soon. So I get surgery, the plate comes out. Okay. Um, the plate comes out, then I get an MRI. Yep. And then I find out, so. Wow. Hopefully. Good news is coming this way. Fuck, I'm telling you, good news is coming, mate. Let me tell you. <laughs> So from all of this, mate, you're like, where are you now? Where are you at? Where are you at with everything? Um, headspace, body, headspace, life, job. Pretty average, pretty low. Um, right. If this cyst does come back, then it's just like, it's like someone's out to get me, you know, but it's oh, it's the challenges of life that yeah. that make you the person who you are. Yeah. Um, I'm, physically, I train, I train five, six days a week, so I, you know, look good, don't always feel good. Yeah. But, um, no, I've, I've start, as I said, I started seeing a psychologist, so I'm excited for that in a way because yeah. I know it's going to help me. Yeah. Um, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like a cloud at the moment, yeah. isn't it, technically? Yeah, yeah massive it's like cloud. A, it's a cloud at the front of your head and yeah. like you can't see what's ahead. No. And you, obviously you're not reaping any rewards kind of thing. No, like, you no. just, it's just like, oh <laughs> shit, like, I need to figure something out. I, yeah. need to, I need to sort out. I need to do something now. Yeah. Um, it takes time yeah. to... You know, get through that stuff, and no, it's, you know it sucks. No, it does suck. Wrong. Big time, yeah. But if you can keep pushing yourself every day, yeah, out of bed, being yourself, present is yeah, something I've noticed. Present. Huge. I, I used to dwell on the past heaps, dwell on the future heaps. Yeah. Just like getting heaps of anxiety about the future and the past. But if you're just present, and it, obviously I'm not saying I'm present all the time. Yeah. Like it's so hard to Pretty do that. Hard. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But it's something I'm really trying to work on, and just take it. Day by day, if that's too much, take it hour by hour, minute yeah. by minute. Like, what's next? What am I going to do next? What's yeah. going to distract me next? How am I going to help myself next? Yeah. Just trying to be present with everything and yeah. not not get so worked up about the future and the past. Yeah. It, it just eats away. You, you can't change what's happened. Exactly and you've right. got no idea what's going to happen in the future. Exactly right. So Sometimes, just, look, there's a, that's, there's a beauty in that, in saying mm. that. You don't know what's in the future. Which yeah. is, you know, if everyone in the future, just be shit. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a beauty to it all. Like, 
Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, go after the, your goals. Yeah. And, like, go and do things that make you feel uncomfortable. Go travel the world. Go yeah. fucking be present. You know what I mean? Mm, go go yeah. do things that you would never usually do. No. Go see another side to life. Yeah. Because then you can come back and say to yourself, fuck, I'm glad I did that. 100%. My mum, my mum, mom, for all these people that didn't know my mum, my mum's the biggest fucking travel, 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 yeah. travel, travel, go, yeah. go, travel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't she blame is. her for saying that. She, she loves it. She loves it. She and absolutely then, loves it. There's a reason why she's so happy as well, you know? Exactly right. She's travelled the world, mate. Yeah. And I'm not, I, I, I'm, I'm so blessed. Such a beautiful parent. No, and dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, definitely. It's just crazy how living present is so, such a beautiful thing. But it's such a hard thing hard to thing. do. Exactly right. Yeah. Like, it's it's a hard thing. It's hard for people to swallow. Yeah, and that's been my biggest thing is trying to be present as much as I can. Yeah. And just letting things that you can't control, just let it go, let it be. Whatever yeah. happens, happens. Exactly right. If you stay present, then you're not going to get so worked up about exactly right, mate. things you can't control. This is a question I'm going to be asking every guest. Where does Matty Marsh see himself in five years' time? So what do you know? 20, 21. 21. 20, mm-hmm. 20, I've got it wrong to start. 21. 21. Jesus. Yeah, very young. Fucking up we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to turn 23. That's just crazy. Yeah. You know yeah. right? Yeah. The whole life ahead of us, bro. Yeah, and I think that's such a beautiful thing as well, is that, yeah, yeah I, I could, like, yeah, what's going on with me right now in the last year and a half has fucking sucked. But yeah. I've still got a whole life ahead of me. So That's the thing, mate. you just got to just be present. <laughs> yeah, 100%. We keep, keep coming right. back to that. Yeah. You know, man, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, 100%. So what's that? You're 20, 25, 26, you'll be. Yeah, 26. Um, such a hard question, eh? Five yeah, years. Like, I, if you said to me three years ago that all this stuff had happened to me in the last year and a half, I'd be like, you, you're taking the piece. Bullshit. Bro. You're taking the absolute piece. But Bullshit. um, yeah, I'm going to do my graduate of arboriculture. Yep. So um, that covers... It's like more the science of trees and why trees grow certain ways and do certain things. Wow. Sounds very nerdy and niche. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing, but, but yeah, um, I love that. Yeah, I'll be the youngest Cert 8 in Sydney for potentially Australia because I'll be 22. That? Yeah, um, so I'll be going to Melbourne for a week. You do an intense week. Shit, yeah. And then you have a year, uh, a year, 12 weeks to then get all your assessments done, all your content covered. Yeah. Online, so you can do it online. No, no exams, nothing. Yeah. Um, that's something I've sorted out with work. Yep. I definitely want to have a kid by like twenty six. Yep. Situational, very situational thing to talk about, oh, but absolutely. Like, I'm not just gonna have a kid because I'm, I'm twenty five now. I'm gonna have a kid. I have a kid. Everyone's like, everyone's that, 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 like that, that. Oh, when I'm twenty five. Yeah. Kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll get married by like 50 You know what I mean? But that shit just happens, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Leave prison, you know what I mean? Yeah, just let it happen. Just let it happen. You know what I mean? But, um, it's definitely something I've thought about. Again, it's all situational, financial, yeah. um, geographical, yeah. what I'm doing myself. I might end up in five years quitting my job now and doing something completely different. Yeah, but you exactly just never right. know. You never know. Um, with my knee in the next five years, I'd want to run 100Ks. Shut up. Because uh, I love, I used to love running, man. What's that? What's what's so what's what's a marathon? It's 42, 42. kilometers. Yeah, k's. Because um, that's some day of going shit. I right just feel like saying that you'd run a hundred k's is like, <laughs> who does? Like I don't, I know, <laughs> I think two people that have done it, like that I actually know. What's a hundred k's? Where would that be? That's like the the one that my mate did was from. Oh, what's that lookout? Bass lookout? Oh, I don't know. Uh, no, the no National Park. Is a crash it's from like, it's like, there to, uh, it's like from here to Wollongong. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There yeah, you go. 100 k's, yeah. Wow. And, because I used to, yeah, as I said, I love, I used to love running. Yeah. I miss running so yeah. much. Oh, I enjoy it, mate. Ever since starting the challenge, runners I, I love high, it. Runners high is a crazy thing. Like, yeah. You just feel, yeah, you feel so good after Different, you run. bro. Yeah. But it's a different level of fitness too, man. Yeah. You know I mean? But with 100k, it's, it's such a mental challenge. Like, yeah. your body gets to a point where it's pushed to its limit, and then it's just all your head. Yeah. Like, what are you telling yourself to keep yourself going? Yeah. So, I think depending on how long my knee takes to recover, I think yeah. running 100k is something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Crazy. Because, yeah, I think it's so sick saying you've run 100k. Question music, no music. No music. Sicko, bro. No Same music, thing, my boy Drew. <laughs> Drew, you're the, you're the, you're the, there's the one that's talking about him. I was talking about yeah. like, the 60 routine. Yeah. 
That man yeah, runs with no fucking headphones. Same when I train. I said, bro, gym. you're a sick. I don't. I might. Don't mind that. Yeah. I train. I train at the gym with a good mate, Sam Weinstein, and mine, that we're doing. Yeah. Like, doing the same thing. Like, we don't train with headphones. Yeah. We think it's so much better. Like, the baby, like yeah. I said, like in the, in the in that moment. Like, yeah. Like I've used them a couple up. of times. You know, yeah. But and that they help. A hundred percent help. But I think when it comes to running. No music, man. Nah, man, that's crazy, no bro. Just, I need just, something just going, bro. Just, I need some 50 cent just bopping nah, and saying, just running down the just road, you bro. You and yourself, bro. You and yourself. Wow. And just that's respect. You against you, yeah. 100%, bro. 100%. And that's why when I was running, and I'd be like, all right, we'll stop at 20, and I'd go to 25Ks. And it's just like, once I finished, I was like, I just won. I won against myself. 100%. And that's why I thought it was such a positive thing. Like, yeah. I was winning small battles mentally, but. It's a f- it's more of a physical challenge. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. Your body yeah, is right. Yeah. Like mentally, you can do it. Like obviously, that's the hard part. But if yeah. you can tell yourself like, nah, my calf isn't hurt. Nah, mm. my quad's not tight. If you can tell yourself that, like you can go another level. Yeah, and I think. Yeah, I definitely enjoyed running, but I think it, same thing with the whole working out thing. Yeah. Once once I got home and like stopped. Yeah. Just your head just starts going crazy uh, again because you you're not running anymore. You know? Yeah. 100 kilometers. Yeah. I think that's something I want to do. One day, at least once in my life. Bro, I struggle to get fucked by <laughs> mate. I'm sitting out there yeah. and I'm, it's cold morning, you know, which yeah. I'm running five. I'm like, damn, that's another 95 kilometers, 95 bro. Ks, yeah, another 95 Ks is it's next level. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's just such a such a big feat, like running 100 Ks is 100%. Insane. insane. Yeah. So like lifting, like, like bench 100 kilos. That's a big, I'm not yeah. quite, but you know what I mean, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying, like, I haven't got there yet, but I'll get there soon, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. No, nah, mate, honestly, yeah, fucking, what a, what a, what a life. Yeah. And, and what are you, still 20, it's only 20, only 21, fucking yeah. one. And I, I need to keep reminding myself that, because like, I slip hard. up sometimes. You, you, know? said, you said you moved out? Yeah, I moved out, you yeah. moved out a couple of mates, oh, just mate and your brother? Yeah. At 21, you moved out already? Yeah. You're out renting on your own? Yeah. You know, you've obviously had a pretty shit. Last couple yeah, of years, yeah. and you, you fuck your knee, so mm. well, they, oh, like you can't get on the trees and that. No, so oh, no. you're saying you're in the office. Yeah, I'm in the office now with work, That's which awesome. I hate, but I've got yeah. no other choice, and I'm still working with trees. So yeah, it's hard. You got to find the positive. You got to do what you got to do sometimes, mate. Yeah, I just got to keep reminding myself that I've got so much life ahead of me. Oh, that's crazy, right? That even when you're thirty, yeah, there's so yeah. much life ahead of you. Hundred percent. Well, all the shit stuff that's happening now is. Yeah, whatever. I'll get over. I know I'll get over. It. I know yeah. I'll get through it. That's what I'm saying. Go back to that. There's always a fucking light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, no matter how tough life is, 100%. there's light, bro. There is something out there. There's someone out there that'll help you through it. There's multiple out there to help mm. you through it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. It's up to you. You got to take that step. If you're not in a good headspace, then fucking speak to someone. <laughs> speak to someone. Go and do something. Help yourself. Don't blow it up. Yeah, you, before you help other people. Bro, I don't want to speak, man. I yeah. like to speak. Because if you, if you don't love yourself and if you're not happy with yourself when you feel vulnerable, how you're not genuinely going to help and yeah. love other people. You know? Exactly so right. How can, you, how can you yeah, no, give that love off to other people? How can you tell people to go and get help but you're not getting help yourself? Exactly That was right. me for ages. I was telling people to go get help. And yeah. I wasn't doing it for myself. Exactly right. That's what I'm saying. You're too good of a bloke. You put yeah. yourself second. Sometimes yeah. you've got to put yourself first. Yeah. It's a, and sometimes that's a key in life, you know what I mean? Sometimes you've got to take a step back and say, oh, I want to do this for myself today. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm a big believer in it. Even good... with loss and trauma, and a lot of people would come to me and say, it had been, they'd put me first. Yeah. And then, but everyone deals with it differently. Like, if, you, if you're upset, just go be upset. You shouldn't yeah. feel bad about being upset around you. There's nothing wrong with it. There's like, not a thing wrong with it. Yeah, people would say to me, like, I don't want to be upset around you because I don't know, I feel bad. And I was like, just just let it out. Just be, yeah. be upset. If, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah, and I'm a, I'm a big believer in a good mate was drilled in my head like, if you're working hard and you're and you're going through shit mm. and you fucking you've done something good, yeah, like you've achieved a goal, fuck, go reward yourself, Celebrate. bro. Celebrate. Go get that you type. Go get a massage. Like, spend eighty bucks. Go yeah. buy yourself a new a PlayStation. Go buy yourself some new clothes. Go do something. Go yeah. fly to Brisbane for the week. Go yeah, reward yeah. yourself, man. Like, people are so stuck in that. Some, a lot of people just like, work, 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 yep. get to be successful when they're 30, 40, you know, later in mm. life. Bro, live now and reward yourself now. Yep. You know what I mean? You have to reward yourself. Sometimes, if you don't reward yourself, there's no point Man, in doing get, that hard you work. You go crazy. You go yeah. crazy doing it. But exactly when you do right. reward yourself, come back, set a new goal. What's exactly next? Right. Reward yourself. Go buy something yourself. You know? yeah. go, go, go help yourself do something this and that. Go, yeah. go, go find that reward. Then get back into it. Yeah, and same on the, on the, on the other side of that. I call it the middle road. It's where you do work hard, you're doing things for yourself, yeah. 
if you're upset and sad, go be upset and sad. Mm. Make sure you've got your ways to, to get out of that. So you can come back to the middle road. And then when you're so happy and doing things and um, achieving goals, celebrate it, but come back right mm-hmm. to the middle. Hard. And also, also on that, get to the point where you know you reward yourself. You've worked hard, reward yourself. Yeah. Then work double hard. Then work that extra bit harder the next mm. time. And reward yourself for something better. Yeah. Reward yourself for something better the next time. You can't just that. keep rewarding yourself for not doing anything. Exactly yeah. right. So you've got to come back. You've got to be disciplined with it. You've got to say, fuck, okay, I, needed, I did this last time. I can do that in that amount of time. And yeah. I had a few days to spare. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I can work a bit harder. Maybe I can, you know, and say, go and say, oh, I can, you know, so there's extra 20 emails that to, to people, you know, Definitely, you, know, yeah. or, you know, you know, do that bit of extra work, you know, while I'm in here, people at uni, people at school, you know, do that little bit extra. Yeah. You know, you know, go, you know, people in high school, for example, you know, it, it could be the difference between getting a fucking 80 at and an 85 at yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you just work a bit harder. Just a little bit extra every time. You know time. what I mean? You'll sit there and go, oh my God, that feels fucking good. Because then you can celebrate that bit oh. extra every time as well. Oh man, yeah. that, that, that feels, that feels genuinely yeah. great. And yeah, definitely do that. And remember that. When you feel good, remember that time. Yeah. Remember how you feel present good. in that time. Yeah, yeah, because there's days where you'll go, fuck, man, I feel like shit. 100%. And you won't know what to do with 100%. yourself. 100%. And you know sometimes I mean? it's so hard to get out of your head when, yeah. you, when you are feeling that low. Yeah. Like, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I've, I'm Mate, so no, I'm perfect. I, yeah, I haven't got this figured out. There's no yeah. book on how to deal with shit yeah. like this. But just from my experience, this yeah. is what I know I need to do. I don't always do it. Yeah. Um, but... I know what needs to be done and I'm like, just trying to work on yeah. it every day. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I guess I'm a big believer in people that are, have got a plan. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like whether it's a three-year plan, five-year plan, ten-year yeah. plan. I'm a massive believer in that. If you can sit down and be disciplined to it and say, okay, I want to be here in two years, three years time, but I want to be here in five years time. Mm. When you reach those goals, fucking reward yourself. Yeah, definitely. Tell yourself, fuck, I got there. You might get there in a year. You might only get there, you might get there in four or five years. You know what I mean? But the minute you get there, Go treat yourself. Hundred percent, I agree. Couldn't agree more. Right? Nah, it's just it's what you need to do for you, yeah. for yourself, for your head, for your for your body. Yeah. Like you can't just work yourself into the ground all the yeah. time. Yeah. And fucking smile while you do yeah, it, man. Smile I cannot, while you do it. It's so it's free road. Hundred percent. Please smile. Hundred percent. All right, mate. That was fucking incredible, mate. I appreciate it. First podcast, I was. A, oh, mate, I was sweating, bro. This whole time before this, I was setting everything up. I didn't know if it's gonna work. I don't even know if it's gonna work at all. Yeah. Um. I think that went like an hour. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Wrongs to Riches, um, thank you for tuning into the first podcast. It's been incredible. Matty Marsh, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. Genuinely, thank you so much. It's going to blow up. I've got so much belief in this. Um, this will not only be the first, we're not only having one, one fucking we'll podcast. Have a, we'll have a more lighthearted chat. 100%, bro. Time. A month down the road, we'll be chatting away, this and that, talking about how we're doing in life. You know, that's what it's all about. We're not just, we're not just doing this one podcast shit where you just get on and get off. Mm. We really want to, you know, see how everything's going. Yeah, definitely. Mate. No, I'm keen for it. Good hour. Well done. Good hour, yeah. Bloody earth, mate. Nice. Thank you. Right, Thank thanks, you. guys, for the love and support. It's been an absolute pleasure to Thanks do this so stuff. Um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. See you next time. Fucking oath, brother.